Next, we revisit a story published in the September issue of the Yale Daily News magazine. There, Jack Newsham explored the controversy surrounding Stefan Schmidheine, a Swiss businessman who was awarded an honorary degree from Yale 18 years ago. The controversy came after Schmidheine was convicted of contributing to the deaths of over 2,000 Italians living near and working in his company's asbestos plants. Now, a New Haven lawyer is pressuring Yale to answer for its past recognition of Schmidheine. Jack Newsham has more. It was June 3rd, 2013, in Turin, Italy. And inside the Court of Appeals, a verdict was being read that would decide the fate of a Swiss businessman charged with endangering workers in a factory that he had never even seen. He had been charged with causing a disaster there that had killed 2,000 people. This court redetermines the overall sentence against the defendant Stefan Schmidaini as 18 years imprisonment. So who is Stefan Schmidaini? If you ask some people, he's an environmental guru who rallied some of the world's largest companies to go green in the 1990s. When the dimensions and the potentially existential threats of damages to the global environment became visible, it was then time to plan to change course. As his defenders tell it, Schmidheine is being punished for making the best of bad circumstances. In 1973, at age 29, Stefan inherited the presidency of Eternit, a multinational company that had for generations made concrete strengthened with a natural fiber called asbestos. What scientists soon began to agree upon, though, is that breathing asbestos causes cancer and other illnesses. Even today, some 100,000 people die every year from asbestos-related diseases. And so, Schmidheine's attorneys claim, he invested millions to cut down on asbestos dust with new technology, shown here in footage from Swiss television channel RTI. He devoted millions more to finding replacement fiber for asbestos, even though it ended up bankrupting the Italian division of his company. In the 90s, Schmidheine left his asbestos plants behind and invested in sustainable forestry. He wrote a book about it called Changing Course and encouraged other companies to clean up their acts too. He even came to Yale to speak about it. That's why, in 1996, Yale gave him an honorary doctorate of humane letters. In the award citation, they hailed him for making company decisions based upon the health of the planet and introducing new technologies and ways of doing business that are environmentally friendly. But to the people of Casale Monferrato, a small town in northern Italy, Yale's honorary degree is a slap in the face. If you ask them about Stefan Schmidheine, they'll tell you he's the man responsible for poisoning their entire city. Recently, the local paper nicknamed the honoris causa degree Yale gave him a horrorous causa degree. My husband died 17 years ago. He was 49. And he died of mesothelioma. And he had never worked in the factory. Vicky Franzinetti is a volunteer with Afeva, an Italian asbestos victims association. She also contributed translations for this video. But why doesn't he look at the victims in their face? Why doesn't he look at them in their eyes and say, I'm sorry? Because really what they would, many of them would like, is somebody, the person in, responsible, saying, I'm really tragically sorry, not a lawyer going up and saying, my client is extremely sorry for what has happened and now is offering you 35,000 euros to leave the case. Last year, local attorney Chris Meisenkofen began sending letters to Yale's administrators and trustees on behalf of Afeva, the Victims Association. He's working pro bono and was introduced to Afeva through an expert witness for the prosecution. Uh, we made a number of requests in our original letter. In a five-page note he sent to Yale administrators, faculty, and trustees, Meisenkothen requested Yale share information regarding its decision to award Schmidheine an honorary degree. He asked for the opportunity to meet with members of the Yale Corporation. Responding on Yale's behalf, Vice President Kimberly Golf Cruz said that the university was sorry for the suffering of asbestos victims. But the bottom line, she wrote, was that there was no record of Yale ever revoking an honorary degree and we are not considering that step in regard to Mr. Schmidheine. Yale University's website shows that over 2,700 honorary degrees have been awarded since 1702, and none seem to have inspired so much controversy. In subsequent letters, Meisenkothen inquired about two donations that one of Schmidheine's companies had made to the Yale Center for Environmental Law and Policy. Golf Cruz confirmed them 
but insisted that donations have no bearing on awarding honorary degrees. Meisenkothen also requested Yale form a faculty committee to investigate whether the award was merited. Uh, that we have here a case where on the one hand it seems that we may have awarded an honorary doctorate uh, to somebody for something where that person was actually not excellent in that area but ac actually a great offender in that area for many years and secondly and perhaps even more disturbingly there is a possibility and again I'm not taking a stance at this certainly at this point there's at least a possibility that Yale has been had. Still, Golf Cruz, who declined to be interviewed for this story, demurred. In a December letter to Lizen Cothen, she said without going into detail that Yale does not believe that the events subsequent to the award of degree call into question the essential information upon which the committee and the corporation acted. Lizen Cothen said he doesn't view the university as an adversary, but he's not happy with the response. Um. And they haven't attempted to grapple at all or respond really to the, the, the very substantive points that we've made. You know. William K. Riley was a Yale trustee in the 1990s and submitted Schmidheine's name for consideration for an honorary degree. He said in a phone call that the scope of the disaster in Casale was not known to his committee, nor were the legal troubles of Etienne's Italian management that began in the 1980s. Well, I didn't have detailed understanding in 1996 of uh, the cement business and asbestos making or of this angry community in, uh, in Italy. It, it, this was, at the time, not a controversial decision. But Riley criticized the Italian court for stretching the law in an effort to tar Schmidheine as the bad guy. He also said he thinks Schmidheine deserved the honor, saying he brought environmental thinking to investment and called the idea of an inquiry preposterous. Have any tobacco manufacturers or sellers been, been tried in Italy? If it was killing all the people that we now know it was, and we've known it since the Surgeon General's report in 1966 in the United States, where have they been on that one? There's a whole series of procedural curiosities about the case. Schmidheine's defenders have strongly objected to the trial, comparing it to other Italian legal controversies like the case of Amanda Knox, who was tried for a second time after being declared not guilty, and the conviction of several seismologists who were accused of failing to predict an earthquake in central Italy. Martin Kilius, a Swiss law professor and judge, has written extensively about wrongful convictions and says he believes intense public pressure made the trial completely unfair. And he might have a point. A judge responsible for sentencing Schmidheine went so far as to compare him to Hitler before even issuing his judgment, a statement Kilius says would be illegal in many European countries. Still, Meisenkothen says Yale is avoiding the big questions. Residents living in the area have an astronomically high rate of mesothelioma. And so was that part of the essential information? And if it wasn't back in 1995 and 96, when Yale was considering this, shouldn't they be considering that now? Uh, it would be, we would be well advised to look into this and either stick to our guns and say, we have nothing to be ashamed of. This is a perfectly good honorary doctorate. He deserved it or to say uh, we made a, a big mistake, we've been had, and uh, we should rescind this honorary doctorate. Schmidheine's defense team has now taken the case to Italy's Supreme Criminal Court and has vowed to go as far as appealing to the European Court of Human Rights. For YTV, this has been Jack Newsham. Italy outlawed asbestos in 1992.